So with number 13, the directions are write the equation in standard form of the line satisfying the given conditions. All right, so I think this is the first question of the practice test so far that we've been asked to work with the standard form. So let's go ahead and write exactly what the standard form is. And you'll recall that it's AX plus BY equals C. And they want us to take this information they've given us. They've given us a point and they've given us a slope. And they want us to come up with the equation of a line that uh, satisfies these given conditions. And so when we're given a point and a slope, we want to use the, wait for it, point slope form. And sometimes I, you know, I really emphasize kind of those two words. When they give us a point and they give us a slope, use the point slope formula. Only because with the point slope formula, which is y minus y1 equals m times quantity x minus x1, you are able to take this information, plug it directly into this formula, and uh, solve for either the standard form or slope intercept form depending on what the directions ask you and so you'll recall that when we are finding the slope of a line between two points we label our points don't we we label x1 y1 x2 y2 well we're going to do the same thing here except when we have one point to label so this is going to be our x1 and this is going to be our y1 and it's no coincidence that we want to label our given point x1, y1, and that our formula has an x1 and y1. Because this point is going to go into our formula where the x1 and y1 are. Similarly, we have an m, we're given a slope, and the m that we're given and the m in the formula are one and the same. So we're going to plug in that m value into the point slope form. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have y minus y1. Well, what's y1? Well, in this case, it's 3 equals m. Well, what's m? Negative 2, oh, not negative 2 fifths, negative 2 thirds, times the quantity x minus x1. Well, what's x1? 4. All right, and now from here, we have kind of two options. We can either right away go ahead and distribute this uh, slope through um, our set of parentheses behind or what we can do is we can go ahead and clear the fraction uh, and end up working with an equation that doesn't have a fraction in it and generally speaking that's what I like to do so the way that we clear our fraction you'll recall is we're going to multiply this entire equation by the common denominator and in this case our common denominator is 3 so let's go ahead and multiply this whole equation by 3. And really what we're saying is take each term in the equation and multiply it by 3. And when we do that, we're going to have now 3 times y, which gives us 3y. Negative 3 times 3 is now minus 9 equals. And the whole reason we did this was to cancel this fraction out because this 3 and this 3 cancel and we're simply left with a negative 2 and then that quantity x minus 4. And so now you can see we have a, an equation that doesn't have any fractions, which I prefer to work with. But these two equations are saying the exact same thing, just one has a fraction and one does not, but uh, these are equivalent equations. All right, so now let's go ahead and put this equation into standard form. So the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead now and distribute this to through. So we'll have 3y minus 9 equals negative 2 times x gives us negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 4 gives us a positive 8. And if we want to put this equation into standard form, ax plus by equals c, that means I want my x and my y on one side and the constant, the number without a variable, on the other. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Well, I want my x and my y on one side. So I have my y on the left, and so I'm good there, but my x is on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and move this x over by adding 2x to both sides. And when we do that, I'm going to go ahead and go over here to give us some more room. We're going to end up with now 2x plus 3y minus 9 equals 8. 
All right, so this is looking a, a lot better than our previous step. We have our x and our y on the left-hand side, on one side, and we have our constant here on the opposite side, but I still have a constant on the left side with my variable. So let's go ahead and move this constant from the left to the right, and we'll do that by adding 9 to both sides, and that's going to leave us with 2x plus 3y equals, and then of course 9 plus 8 is going to give us 17. And so now I have my x and my y on one side, my constant on the other, that matches the form of uh, the standard form of a line and of, a, of an equation, and so I know I am good to go here. All right, so what you, uh, again, are doing when you are given a point and given a slope, you're using the point-slope formula, and using this formula to take you through uh, so that you can rewrite the equation in either standard form, which is what the directions here were, or you can also write uh, your equation in slope-intercept form if that's what the directions are asking.